Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me for this Bible study uh, Sunday school lesson, uh, Prayer That Moves Heaven, Power with Purpose. This is lesson two, as we'll be looking at uh, second, that third Thessalonians, second Thessalonians three, one through five. Um, uh, welcome to this study. I uh, hope you're enjoying it already. Uh, praying is our way of acknowledging our total dependence on God. And lesson two, as uh, we look at praying for others, an important aspect of prayer, an important aspect of our uh, Christian life and as our life together as a church and the family of God. The main idea in this lesson that there is a great power uh, in intercession. And the point that's well taken from this lesson, to understand we need to show love to those in our family as well as those whom God places in our lives. Asking for prayer is not a weakness. It is a mark of dependence. So 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. Today's lesson is about a specific prayer request and the need for intercessory prayer. Paul thought that everyone needed prayer. He prayed for others and he requested prayer for himself. So before we read 2 Thessalonians uh, 3, uh, let's pray together this morning. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity we have to study your word. And Father, we just now pray that um, you would guide our study together um, Lord, you would pierce our hearts uh, to know the importance of, of prayer and praying for one another and praying for our leaders and praying for those around us. Father, uh, give us um, a new enlightenment today on how prayer uh, can make a difference in not only our lives, but the lives around us. We do pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, Second Thessalonians 3. Uh, starting with verse one, I hope you have your Bibles. I'm going to read uh, from mine here as we uh, as we look into God's Word this morning. Finally, brothers, pray for us that the message of the Lord may spread rapidly and be honored, just as it was with you. And pray that we may be delivered from wicked and evil men, for not everyone has faith, but the Lord is faithful and he will strengthen and protect you from the evil one. We have confidence in the Lord that you are doing and will continue to do the things we command. May the Lord direct your hearts into God's love and Christ perseverance. So Paul's prayer request here, as we, as we see this, finally, brothers, pray for us that the message of the Lord may spread rapidly and be honored just as it is with you. So just as it had spread rapidly in, uh, with the Thessalonians, uh, he's praying that it may be delivered uh, from wicked and evil men, for not everyone has faith. So let's look at this. Finally, brothers and sisters, pray for us. Paul constantly asked other Christians to pray for him. Romans 15.30 I urge you, brothers and sisters, by our Lord Jesus and by the love of the Spirit, to join me in my struggle by praying to God for me. And in 2 Corinthians 1.11, as you help us by your prayers, then many will give thanks on our behalf for the gracious favor granted us in answer to the prayers of many. In Ephesians 6, 18 and 19, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep in, on praying for all the Lord's people. Pray also for me that whenever I speak, words may be given so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel. And then in Philippians 1, 19, for I know that through your prayers and God's provision of the spirit of Jesus Christ, what has happened to me will turn out for my deliverance. Then Colossians 4, 3, and pray for us too, that God may open a door for our message so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ for which I am in chains. 
1 Thessalonians 5, 25. Brothers and sisters, pray for us. And in Philemon 1, 22. And one thing more, prepare a guest room for me because I hope to be restored to you in answer to your prayers. Paul knew that the success of his ministry in some measure depended on the prayers of God's people. So Spurgeon said, you cannot tell how much God's servants are helped by the prayers of his people. The strongest man in Israel will be the better for the prayers of the weakest saint in Zion. So Paul's prayer request, let's look at 2 Thessalonians 3, um, the first couple of verses. Finally, brothers, pray for us that the message of the Lord may spread rapidly and be honored just as it was with you. That the word of the Lord may spread rapidly and be honored. Paul's great concern of what he first asked the Thessalonian Christians to pray for was that God's word be free to do its work among others, even as it had among had done among the Thessalonians, because he said, just as it is with you. Paul asked for prayer so that the word can run freely without hindrance. Paul's prayer request makes us wonder how often the work of God's word is hindered by prayerlessness. In other words, us not supporting um, God's word with prayer or supporting those who take God's word and praying for them to deliver uh, God's word boldly and then it would be received. God has promised that his word would be free and perform its work. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please and prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Isaiah 55, 11. But as with many of God's promises, we are expected to take this promise in faith and in prayer to ask God to perform the promise for his glory. So continue Paul's prayer request. Finally, brothers, pray for us that this, this message of the Lord may spread rapidly and be honored just as it was with you and that we may be delivered from wicked and evil people, for not everyone has faith, that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men. Uh, we may know some of those as we have tried to deliver God's word. These were those who wanted to hinder the work of the gospel. Paul wanted God either deliver him from such men or change them into reasonable and godly men. So Paul's, in 2 Corinthians 3, verses 3 through 5, Paul's confidence in the Lord and prayer uh, for the Thessalonians. So, but the Lord is faithful, and he will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. And we have confidence in the Lord that you are doing and will continue to do things we command. May the Lord direct your hearts into God's love in Christ's perseverance. Paul saying, but the Lord is faithful. Even if not all men have faith, the Lord is faithful. Can I hear an amen with that? The Lord is faithful. This was the basis of Paul's confidence in God's ability to establish and to guard us from the evil one. God's, God promised to keep Satan on a leash. He will not allow any temptation to become too great for us. 1 Corinthians 10, 13, no temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind, and God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear, but when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it and will not, and he will not allow Satan to do whatever he wants with us. Luke 22, 31 and 32 says, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift all of you as wheat, but I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. 
And when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. So 2 Thessalonians, uh, again, the, the second part of that, but the Lord is faithful. Let's look at this again. The Lord is faithful and will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. And we have confidence in the Lord that you are doing and will continue to do the things we command. May the Lord direct your hearts into God's love and Christ's perseverance. And we have confidence in the Lord. Paul has already uh, mentioned that, but Paul was also confident in the Lord regarding the Thessalonians themselves, that they would follow through and be obedient to God's word, that you are doing and will continue to do the things we command. This shows that God's word, word work of establishing and guarding us is done in part through his appeal to our will in obeying his word. God doesn't just pour spiritual maturity and stability into us. He works it in us through our cooperation with his will. Now, Paul is saying, now may the Lord direct your hearts. Towards the end, Paul wisely prayed for both love and perseverance or endurance for the Thessalonian Christians. These were two qualities essential for the kind of spiritual stability and strength the Thessalonians needed. Well, as an asterisk here and as an application here, we also need God's direction every day. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. We need to have that in our minds and in our hearts. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your paths straight. So praying for others. We do not pray to change God, but so that we might be changed by him. Prayer is important. In prayer, we can do much for God as we serve him, but we can do little with God without prayer. Prayer for others, or pray for others, pray for your church leadership, pray for God to use you. Let's say this prayer together now. Pray with me as you see it uh, on your screen there, as you pray to him. Here I am, Lord. please speak to me. Show me your ways and your will for my life. Reveal to me how I can point others to you and your great love. Amen. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Praying for others. It is so important in our church fellowship. It's so important in God's kingdom. It's so important as we put our trust and our confidence in the Lord to use us as his instrument of grace. Uh, we pray for others who need strength. We pray for ourselves for God to use us. May the Lord direct your hearts into God's love and Christ's perseverance. May we endure because we call upon the Lord for his strength and for his power. It is the power with a purpose that moves heaven. Blessings to you today. May this be a motivation for all, all of us, to continue to pray and pray without ceasing. May God bless you today in Jesus' name.